So this creek looks a little deeper than what we're used to, but today we're doing something that really reminds me of our childhood. This is how we learned how to catch bass. It is, it is. We would uh, go bass fishing and we'd get up and get our burlap bag, our creek crawling shoes, some old shorts, and go try and get us 30 to 40 crayfish to bass fish with. We're gonna take a seine and a little net and uh, go through, and you know, like I say, we want 15 or 20. This is a really, really good way to pick up probably a bass favorite food source. If you can come in here and get you a bucket full of these, it's pretty simple after that. It's a hook and a split shot. Let's grab our seine and get after it. Let's go see what we can round up. I'll tell you what, let's put a little bit of water in this bucket. I got a bag here that we're gonna put crayfish in. Just give me about two inches of water in there or less. Oh man, that feels great. Yeah, it can almost be a little cooler. All right, let's just pull it up real quick, see if there's any in there yet. Oh, bluegill. Too bad we're not catfishing today. That would be the ultimate piece of bait right there. It's your lucky day, buddy. I think sometimes if I can get up in here, scare them that way, this is how you really get bunches of them. All right, try it again. There uh -oh. we go. Got about 10. And every one of those are the size we're looking for. One more pass like that, and we'll pretty much have what we need. I think with the first little couple passes, we were in too deep of water. You gotta find that perfect mix where the them crayfish like to get. That was a good run there. Oh, I seen them swimming in there, a couple of them. Y'all pick it up. Look at that. That's a pretty good haul right That's there. That's a ball of them. I tell you, there's a million different ways you can do this. If you get in an area that's really, really rocky and you can spot them and see them, but you can't drag a seine, I just take a butterfly net and poke right in front of them and they'll swim right into the net. Of course, you can always hand grab them. Let's get these things in the cooler, make sure that they're not fully submerged and they can crawl up this burlap and uh, get them to the lake, what do you think? Well, we've done the work, now time to see if we can hold up on our end of the deal and catch some fish. That's right. We're down here at Nolan Lake. We decided to fish this lake because we know where there's some rocks that should be perfect for using these crayfish. Last night what we did is we got a cooler that had about an inch of water in it and we just draped this top end over the top of the cooler so that they can crawl up out of the water. If you leave them submerged in the water the whole night they will die so you don't want to do that. So now I'm going to show you where we're rigging this. We're going to use a one-aught circle hook and then an eighth ounce split shot. We're just going to tie this on. is our lucky little winner of the day. We'll tail hook these kind of right in the middle. You don't want it to hang way out because you can almost make it weedless. Now when that thing hits the water, it's gonna take off swimming. So when this thing settles in on the bottom, it's got some free range to move around. And then if he decides to go into his natural motion and that is to hide under a rock, you need to be able to just pick him up out of the rock and let him drift back down. Here we go, got one running right now. Let me get the net. I don't think he's that big. Maybe bigger than I thought. Might well grab the net. Yeah, look at there. Oh, big shot. It's a nice bass right there. Try to let that thing settle in down there around that rock and I just pick it up, let my crayfish swim back down. Pick it up, let that crayfish swim back down. He just picked it up, never felt him hit it, just saw him run with it. Very, very typical. Now this is a pretty decent bass for no Lynn. No Lynn's known for a lot of numbers, but really when you start catching three, four pounders, there's a bunch in here, you gotta work through a lot of numbers to get there. But there you go. Nice fish. There's a fish right there. I mean, he was all over it. Cast right back over there, Chad. Well, 
Smell like a spot. There we go, spotted bass. Look how pretty. Like I say, it hooked right up into the roof of the mouth again. That was my fish, Chad. <laughs> I think this fish did. See that right there, Brian? That's your crawfish. Yep, right there. <laughs> I think he hit your line first, didn't he? Yep. I'll tell you what, that is a size spot that's really good for the dinner table. Let's get this one back. Yes, they are. It's a good fish. There you go. Settle down there, would you? There you go, Brian. It's a good fish right there. You got yourself a two and a half pounder or so there, probably 18 inch fish, maybe even a little better. Beautiful markings and nice healthy bass. Right on the bank. That's a natural spot for these bass to be. Typically, we'll catch them out on the deep rocks, but the water's rising, the fish have moved to the bank, and that's a natural spot for crayfish to be hanging out is in that shallow water. There's another one running with it right now. Is that a good fish? Probably like the last one, I think. Let me get the net. There you go. There you go. Look at that. Where'd that come from? I don't know. That fish must have had that and just spit it out. There you go. That's exactly why I use a circle hook. Look where that hook is at right in the corner. Nice and easy to pop that hook right out and uh, doesn't hurt that fish at all. That's why you use crayfish. You can catch everything. I've caught catfish, bass. I've even caught crappie on accident. Just about everything we eat a crayfish. Yeah, it seems like every one we've uh, caught today, they hit it and you hardly know it, but they come swimming right at you. Really gotta watch your line. You gotta keep it taut. It's when you know you got a good soul right there. Butterfly just hangs out on you. <laughs> Here we go. What is that? Look at there. <laughs> Watermouth. Tell you what, we talked about earlier, that's, that's three species of fish now we've caught on these crawfish. If you're a bass fisherman and you throw a jig very much, you will catch one of these. And a jig is imitating a crawfish, so you know that these things feed on crawfish quite often. You really gotta make sure that if you're gonna just leave this burlap bag up on the deck of your boat, that about every 20 minutes or so, just dip it in there and get it wet and just set it back up there. That'll keep those crayfish alive for a very, very long time. Well, Brian, we don't get out and do this enough. To go out and just give whatever Mother Nature provides you and take it fishing, there's something really cool about that. I think it's all part of the experience. It's always good to get out with your brother and spend some quality time, and it brings back a lot of memories, that's for oh, sure. Yeah. It's a good time. <laughs>